A state of emergency after four torrential storms pound the California coast, closing highways and threatening deadly mudslides. We'll bring you the latest on the mess in the West. As the GOP's newest star arrives in Washington, Democrats worry the health care reform plan could be dead on arrival. I don't think it's possible to pass of the Senate bill in the House. We'll ask former party chairman Howard Dean what's next. After first denying it, John Edwards finally admits he is the father of his ex-mistress's baby, but his troubles may not end there. We'll tell you why he could find himself in even more hot water. And Toyota recalls two million more cars, saying the accelerators can get stuck. We'll tell you what you need to know to stay safe early this Friday morning, January 22nd, 2010. Friday. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to The Early Show. I'm Maggie Rodriguez. You seem especially enthusiastic about this day of the week. Well, I got some good news yesterday, yes. if I may be honest. All right. I'm having a boy. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't wipe this smile <laughs> off my face. Because we already have a girl. That's really good. That's good news. Congratulations. Thanks. Go ahead. I'm Harry Smith, and we can go on. Yes, <laughs> and we should get to the important news this morning. And the big story is out west, where unfortunately the weekend is off to a bad start. They are getting hammered once again. After its fourth storm in a week, a state of emergency has been declared apart, uh, across parts of California, thanks to flooding there and now the fear of mudslides. Dave Price is in La Cañada Flint Ridge, which is just north of Los Angeles with the latest. Good morning, Dave. Here's Maggie. Thanks, Harry. Former Democratic presidential candidate John Edwards is in Haiti this morning, leaving behind a personal mess here at home. Yesterday, he finally revealed that he's the father of the baby born to his former mistress, Riel Hunter. But the trouble for Edwards may not end there. CBS's Whit Johnson is in Charlotte, North Carolina, Hunter's hometown this morning with the latest. Whit, good morning. Maggie. Whit Johnson in Charlotte for us this morning. Thanks, Whit. John Heilman of New York Magazine is a co-author of the new bestseller, Game Change, a book about the 2008 presidential race that looks closely at the Edwards campaign. Good morning, John. Good morning. In addition to your book, which already came out, another one is coming out shortly that deals exclusively with John Edwards and the affair. Mm -hmm. Do you think that he finally admitted to being the father of this child to get ahead of that book? Uh, I think that that certainly was part of it, and I think he was under some pressure from uh, Elizabeth Edwards to do this, I think both because she thought it was the right thing to do for him to admit that he was the father of the child, but I also think that there was a publicity, another, an additional publicity consideration. Rael Hunter, his mistress and the mother of the child, was engaged in a, in a child support lawsuit against Edwards that was about to come mm -hmm. to, to open court. And I think both of the Edwardses thought that there would be damaging information, even more damaging information that's already been out. And they didn't want to see that come out in open court and wanted to shut it down uh, before that happened. Because there have been some damaging leaks from the book that's going to come out by Andrew Young, including claims that Edwards had planned to fake a paternity test. Who is Andrew? Young. Well, Andrew Young was the ultimate uh, uh, Edwards factotum. He was uh, uh, basically had done a lot of menial tasks for John Edwards for a long time. Uh, in the course of the presidential campaign, between right just before the Iowa caucuses, he was the person who came out and claimed paternity of the child originally, um, and that raised a lot of eyebrows among a lot of people. People thought that this was a, a loyalist who was in some way trying to do a favor, take the fall for John Edwards. It was particularly suspicious among Edwards aides who knew because they talked, they'd known Andrew Young for a long time. They knew that. Andrew Young had had a vasectomy a couple of years before, mm -hmm. and so it seemed a little implausible to them that he was the father of this of this uh, of this new child. In addition to his book, your book talks a little bit about the affair as well, and you explain why John Edwards may have originally confessed to the affair but denied paternity. You write, "quote Don't do this interview unless you plan to tell the whole truth." Palmieri urged him. Palmieri, being a, an Edwards aide, Edwards replied that he was going to confess the affair but deny paternity. He didn't want to jeopardize his chances of being Obama's attorney general. So he really thought he had a political chance even after. After the affair came out? That was in the summer of 2008, just before the Democratic Convention, and Edwards both thought that he possibly had a role in the future Obama administration, also wanted to keep his primetime speaking role at the Democratic Convention. In our book, I think there's a, there's a fair amount of kind of crazy behavior among the candidates in our book. There's nothing more delusional than the, than the notion that John Edwards, having fathered this child, would somehow end up being the, the Attorney General of the United States. Something else I found interesting is your, in your book is that you debunk the image that was uh, portrayed of Elizabeth Edwards. It's sort 
of St. Elizabeth. Yeah, you know, I mean, Elizabeth Edwards is obviously a really sympathetic figure. You know, she lost a son to a car crash. She had suffered two bouts of cancer, and her husband had done, had done some pretty horrible things to her. At the same time, one of the things that Mark Halpern and I, my co-author, found was that universally among Edwards aides, there was a different picture of Elizabeth Edwards, and, and these people would say to us that the, there was no one in American life for whom the gap between the public image and the private reality was so great. She was a very difficult woman to deal with for both her husband and for all of the people around them. John Heilman, thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate thanks a lot. you being here. Now here's Harry. Well, Maggie, thanks. Right here in New York for the rest of this morning's headlines. Good morning. Harry, Maggie. thanks. Good morning. Stock prices mostly down around the world this morning. That decline being led by financial stocks, which fell sharply on Wall Street yesterday after President Obama announced a plan to tighten the rules for big banks. CBS News national correspondent Jeff Glor is at the New York Stock Exchange this morning with more on that. Jeff, good morning. Hey, Erica, good morning to you. This plan would be a bit of a throwback to the days before deregulation, and it would sharply limit the size and scope of banks. The market did not respond kindly to President Obama's announcement. The Dow Jones average dropping 213 points. The uh, market had its biggest down day uh, since October. Uh, it wasn't strictly because of this proposal, but the banking stocks were the ones who led on the downside. Surrounded by his financial advisors at the White House, the president said he was prepared for a fight. Never again will the American taxpayer be held hostage by a bank that is too big to fail. The president's plan would prevent banks that borrow from the Fed or take federally insured deposits from owning or using riskier hedge and private equity funds. The administration is proposing a pretty radical re-regulation of the banking industry, kind of getting uh, rid of 10 years worth of deregulatory moves and really restricting the ability of banks to make big bets with their own money. Worth noting that the president split with the ideas of two high-profile members of his economic team on this issue, Tim Geithner and Larry Summers, instead embracing the vision of former Fed chairman Paul Volcker. Also worth noting, this plan would have to be approved by Congress, which is not a sure thing. Erica? Hey, far from a done deal at this point. CBS's Jeff Glor on Wall Street this morning. Jeff, thanks. The Haitian government planning to end search and rescue operations were told today. Meantime, also announcing that hundreds of thousands of earthquake victims will be relocated out of the capital of Port-au-Prince. Some 400,000 homeless people are going to be moved from the capital to resettlement areas in the countryside. There was also a new aftershock overnight. The good news on this one, it was apparently not as strong as the others. We can also tell you the main port in Haiti has partially opened. Food, water, and medical aid, however, do remain scarce. I want to turn our attention now back to Dave, who is in Southern California for our first check of the national weather. And any improvements on that end, Dave, today? Thank you, Dave. Coming up, a potential bombshell in the... To the early show on this Friday morning. It's getting warm here today. It's like 40 some degrees. I'm liking it. Is that good? Yep. Uh, very important story coming up in just a bit, especially for people who own Toyotas. Toyota is recalling another 2 million vehicles because of trouble with gas pedals. This is a story that has uh, been ongoing for a while now. They get stuck. What if it happens to you? Consumer correspondent Susan Copen uh, went to a test course and find out how to stop an out of control car. Hmm. She's going to show us how that works in just a little bit. Also ahead, you know, they say hindsight is 2020. So everybody now is saying that moving Jay Leno to prime time was a huge mistake, mm -hmm. right? But so many other decisions that seemed like good ideas at the time turned out to be some of the worst TV network blunders in history. And we're going to look back on those this morning. But first, former police sergeant Drew Peterson will be back in an Illinois courtroom this morning, one day after hearing testimony that could be a bombshell in the upcoming trial for the murder of his wife. CBS News correspondent Dean Reynolds has the latest. Thank you so much. Thank you. We want to stay in Southern California where Dave is watching the storms and the mudslides. He joins us again. Good morning. 